The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill, and we are in the thick of it. Conference tournament time, one of my favorite times of the year. College basketball, nothing but all the time for the next month, basically, um, until we get to that national championship game. Um, so we will be doing all the conference tournament previews. We'll talk about some of the automatic bids that have already happened, preview all the big ones, ACC, Big 12, Big 10, SEC, and uh, we'll go on from there. Uh, But first, we have a couple news and notes around the NFL. Um, A lot of big contracts have been signed recently, quarterbacks. Um, All the franchise tag time has ended, so anybody that was franchise tagged has been done so already. But we have some quarterback news that some was pretty interesting, some not too shocking, I guess. But at the bottom end of the spectrum, we have Geno Smith getting a three-year extension uh, worth, what is it, $35 million a year? It's uh, three years, 105. Okay, so it's like 30. He's he's guaranteed like forty two million first year I think yeah so or fifty two something yeah yeah Gino got paid yeah <laughs> I think it's fifty two yeah because I think it was like half uh fully guaranteed yeah um so he got paid big time and that also means that Seattle is going to probably not take a quarterback in this draft unless they take it late rounds uh, I still think I mean I still think maybe. That would be if if they took Anthony Richardson. I, I was going to be say, surprised. It would have to be an Anthony Richardson take. Which but we yeah, will, that's like one of the only scenarios I see. We will get to some combine news because Anthony Richardson was all over those that news. Um, then Derek Carr finally made his decision. He's in New Orleans State now. Yeah, He's going to be making thirty seven and a half million, I believe, or around that yeah. number. He's the only like somewhat quality quarterback in that division right now. Yes. So the other teams have div- decisions to make. Yes. New Orleans is probably the favorite right now yeah. in that division. And then um so oh, yeah. the the interesting thing though with the New Orleans deal, a lot of people projected Derek Carr to be going to the Jets. Well, because he signed with the Saints, now there's a lot of rumors and there's talks now that Aaron Rodgers may be a New York Jet next season. What are your thoughts on that, Malik, real quick? Whether it goes good or bad, I'm I'm here for every second of it. Yeah. If Aaron Rod- I need Aaron Rodgers versus New York media. Mm-hmm. Every day. I I just need to see them interacting. I will be reading New York <laughs> uh sports articles every day. I I just I need to see it. Yeah. Cuz and it's it's like him following the path of Brett Favre, mm-hmm. going long into a career and then dipping for the Jets. Yeah. It's I I want it, I want to see it. Like it could go, it could go really well. Right. There is a scenario where he walks into that situation where their defense is ready to roll mm-hmm. when healthy. Healthy Brees Hall showed he was going to be rookie of the year. Right. Then he tore his ACL, and they still got rookie of the year. Exactly. He could come back stronger. Maybe mm-hmm. they got Garrett Wilson. They have young players. They would have to develop some chem- chemistry, obviously. Yeah. But they have a roster that's ready to make a playoff push. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl, who knows? When you throw in Aaron Rodgers, who knows? He also had his last great year two years ago. Mm-hmm. Last year was pretty mediocre for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm here for all of it. I, I need it to happen. They can't go another year with Zach Wilson starting. <laughs> yeah. They can't. Um, And then the, the big news yesterday, I would say, well, there's one more other deal I forgot. Somehow forgot. The other New York team signed their quarterback 
to a four-year extension. Daniel Jones got the bag. He signed for $160 million for four years, so $40 million a year. Um, that's a big contract for a guy that people thought was a bust and a very questionable draft choice. Now he's got his money, so now he's going to have to really step up. Otherwise, New York is going to eat him alive. Can he throw more than 15 interceptions? I mean, uh, touchdown less, passes, not interceptions. <laughs> I was going to say less yeah. interceptions? I, I saw a stat earlier. He's never thrown more touchdown passes than games played in a season. Hmm. Can he do it this year with, yeah. with the bag? And if he doesn't, he's going to actually have to keep stepping up his running game. We saw it a lot more this year. It was very good. Um, but if he's going to keep throwing less touchdown passes, yeah, he, he's going to ca- have to keep doing more with his legs even. Um, and I don't know if that's really possible. Well, now that they franchised Saquon, mm-hmm. they're cr- they're trying to see if they can depend on him another season right. of being fully healthy and getting a lot of carries. Yeah. So, interesting things in New York going on. Um, and then, here's the big news. Lamar Jackson was franchise tagged. I don't think either of us. For, what is it, are. 32 and a half million or something? Listen, as a somewhat fan. And it's the non-exclusive franchise tag. So, other teams can bring him an offer. The Ravens would have to match that offer if they want to keep him. But, if they don't, that team will pay Lamar Jackson and give the Ravens two first-round picks. As a somewhat fan of the Ravens, do you see this as a complete disaster that the Ravens could have avoided for the past two years? It could be. Um, I'm really letting this go this long. I don't under what kind of money. Yeah, has Lamar has, is Lamar Jackson asking for? Right. That's the question I'm starting to ask now. Like, why can't they just get this done? Yeah. So the one bit that a lot of people are kind of forgetting. Lamar Jackson is his own agent. He does not have an agent. I did not realize that part. So that's probably, possibly, where some of the issues may be coming into play. Um, As, you know, if you're doing it, you're, you're being your own agent has got to be a lot tougher than having an agent that does this on the daily. Yeah. Um, knows how to negotiate contracts, things like that. Now, it's been a pretty set precedent for quarterbacks right now. We just saw Deshaun uh, Watson get completely paid for, in my opinion, no reason. And I'm sure Lamar Jackson wants something at least similar to that, if not more. Um, I guess my confusion is just where, like, what is the Ravens play? Like, do they just want to get these first round picks from a team and they feel like they're ready to move on already from someone who's not too far removed from an MVP season. Uh, I'm just, I'm confused. It it doesn't make sense because not too often do you come around a generational quarterback. Now I know there's still question marks for, you know, the throwing capabilities of Lamar Jackson or has he hit his peak for throwing Can he get any better throwing the ball? But at the same time, like the Ravens built their offense around his play to run the ball, do these crazy things. And I I don't know. I'm not. I would. I personally think it's a mistake because if they let him go, I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know what their end goal is. Do they think that? They have to rebuild or something or retool. I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I'm confused. I don't really yeah. know. And this is after the controversy during the combine when their GM came out and made that comment saying, yeah, we haven't had a great track record of drafting receivers. We wish we had an all pro guy. We've never had one. Yeah. And Rashad Bateman coming out and saying, stop blaming us. Right. Stop blaming us. And number eight, he included him too. Mm hmm. For all the things that y'all need to be getting together, yeah. So it's a it's a a bit of a mess from an organization that's never really in messes, right? Yeah, it's a weird spot for them, and and even now, like a lot of people were tr- projecting at one point. I don't I don't think it can happen anymore. A lot of people were projecting the Ravens to get Bijan Robinson in the draft, which they just got J.K. Dobbins not too long ago. He's had a lot of injuries, um, but that just seems 
wild that they would already kind of start moving on. So, yeah, I think it's it's a problem for the Ravens right now because if you lose Lamar Jackson, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, the, he's going to go Tyler Huntley? <laughs> Is that all you I mean? Is that it? He's decent, but he's not Lamar Jackson. He's decent, but you know exactly what's going to happen Yeah, if Lamar Jackson is gone. And you release a statement saying we have full belief in Tyler. The entire fan base is just going to. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to revolt. No, I, I understand that it's tough in the NFL to have multiple facets of a team that need to get paid. Um, they just gave that huge contract to Roquan Smith. Um, during the season last year. So, like, it's hard to be able to pay those guys. That's why I kind of like the NFL because it balances itself out with the salaries a lot of the times. Um, and that's why you see a lot of guys that are running backs are big on rookie deals. So, I don't know. The other weird bit that I'll I'll mention real quick too, for some reason, it, there's been reports that a lot of these teams that need quarterback, commanders, panthers, um, some people thought at the Falcons at one some point. Some of them are sticking with their young guys. They're saying that they are not interested in Lamar Jackson, which boggles my mind even more. Uh, so I don't know if that's like – I've seen some – well, I, I heard the Falcons were trying to talk to the Ravens, but I heard that might yeah. be over already. Yeah, so I, I'm not I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't know. Some if, of those franchises that are rebuilding, I can understand them sticking with young guys Yeah, because Lamar Jackson isn't just fixing mm-hmm. things overnight. Right. But, yeah. But Lamar Jackson is still young, so that's uh, I don't know. Like right now, I would I again I I know it's all, you know, Lions fan base. But they like the Lions. If the Lions could get Lamar Jackson, I'd be okay with it. I just had somebody text me earlier, about saying, "Is it a possibility that the Lions go after Lamar?" Yeah. And I was like, "Ah, there's no really I, there's really no word about that happening." Yeah, at all. I don't really see that being a realistic thing. Um, it doesn't fully make sense, but I think they could get it done if they had to. Um, but you'd probably have to trade. Like, a lot of people have brought up, you could trade Lamar, um, or you could get Lamar, give up those two first rounds, and then people are hoping that you could trade Jared Goff for another first round pick to get one of those picks back. I don't know if that's really doable, but it's been brought up. Um, a couple other notable things about, like, free agency now, and you know, trade rumors. Derrick Henry is apparently one to be on the block, which would be really wild. Another one that I would love to see the Lions go after. I don't, again, it, that's unrealistic, but I think it would be fun. Um, So big names that are going to be out there, Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry. I mean, there are guys that could change a franchise very quickly for the, any of those teams that are on the bubble. Um. I don't know. Where would where would you want to see Let's do each of those guys. Where would you want to see Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry if they don't go back to their teams? If Lamar didn't go back to Baltimore, it really it sucks for Tua, but I'd love to see Lamar back <laughs> home in Florida and Miami. But it feels like as long as Tua can stay healthy, they're going to stick with him. That could so, that would be the greatest show on yeah. turf right there. Lamar in Atlanta would be interesting, especially with like the Michael Vick kind of connections. Mm-hmm. But it, it seems like that's not it's it's a real tough one with him because I don't want to see him with the Jets. I don't want to see him in Washington. Yeah, those types of organizations. Yeah, I, that it's a tough one with Lamar. Yeah, but with Derrick Henry, I would want to see him in Pittsburgh. <laughs> That'd be funny. Just his, I, I'm, I guess that would kind of be giving up on on Najee Harris. Yeah. But it's like a culture fit. Yeah. But like, yeah, his, the way he runs, Najee Harris, I guess, is a similar type of runner, but he doesn't have the juice Derrick Henry has. Yeah. Even with Derrick Henry getting older, his straight line speed is at a, is at a different level. Mm-hmm. His power in the open field is at a different level. Like, he's, we know how good of a, great of a running back Darren, Derrick Henry has been. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, seeing him in Pittsburgh and that culture fit would, would be pretty great. And it takes some pressure off of Kenny Pickett yeah. and those young weapons. Yeah. I just don't know if that would like put the Steelers in a position because I I would feel like at this stage of Derrick Henry's career he'd like to compete um, I honestly, for a winning team. I honestly feel like if him putting him in Pittsburgh, it might be it, enough. It, it would all depend on the development of Kenny Pickett. Yeah, and they they do have a few holes on defense too. So yeah, I'm not sure if they would be a. I think they'd be a division threat 
Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I get the idea behind it. What contender would he like just fit in? Like, I don't want to see him in Kansas I know, City. right? <laughs> Putting or him Buffalo. In, that's, that'd be too much. That, that's just, yeah, that's yeah. a lot. I mean, we just saw McCaffrey go to San Francisco, but I guess they don't really have a quarterback. Every so. contender, like, has their running back. Yeah. And Kansas City just has a rotating what, door guy. What about Lamar in San Francisco? That's, come, come on. Lamar, Christian McCaffrey, I don't, Debo. I'm pretty That's sure they lot. have no money to do that, but it'd be wild. Yeah, I That think, would be overkill. I think Miami would be the most interesting one for Lamar just because he wouldn't have to throw crazy deep passes necessarily. Um, they can do shorter routes with Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill, and trying to defend three of those guys is it sounds impossible to be yeah, honest. Lamar in Detroit would be fun. Yes. I, I think it would be, be really fun. It'd be a good fit, but yeah. – I just don't see it happening. Derrick Henry, yeah, that one's tough. So I, I don't see the team where you add him and it's instantly like, oh, we're there. Like the Chargers have Austin Eckler. I've heard people say Philadelphia. I feel like they're. I don't know that to me. That almost feels like when they brought in Demarco Murray, mm-hmm. and it was just like a weird fit. Yeah, yeah it, it'd be it'd be strange. Mm-hmm. He, I'm sure he would work out, but it would, it would be different, right? Yeah. Um. Okay. That's Seattle. Some of the Seattle. Yeah. Oh, they they got they got Kenneth Walker mind. though. Yeah, he just I had forgot. a big season. They have, Dennis, they have Kenneth Walker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's basically it for news and notes for NFL. Um, got to talk about the combine for a minute. We mentioned Anthony Richardson. He did exactly what I expected. Yeah. He. So the only question that I have, do you think he's going to actually be drafted high like Malik Willis? Or will he be like after the combine, people settle down and then they'll go back to the game tape and he'll still be, you know, that 15 to 25 range where he was originally thought. Now, Malik Willis fell much farther than people ever expected. I don't think Anthony Richardson's going to have that's going to happen to him. I, I really I cannot tell right now. When it like whether it's because well like Will Levis his shine has just like fallen to the back right now yeah with all the Anthony Richardson talk mm-hmm. and I still think Will Levis could go ahead of Anthony Richardson I don't I don't know where either of them could go yeah like where are the Raiders aren't the are they in the top ten yeah there's seven the Raiders and Will Levis like being connected just is in is just stuck in my brain yeah I feel like that's where Will Levis most likely is going at seven mm-hmm. I I don't know if he doesn't go top ten I think he falls. Somebody might like trade up to draft him, but I I don't know. Yeah, like when when it actually comes time, teams like might start getting scared. Yeah, if anything, and, and he starts falling. The Anthony Richardson hype only helps the Lions' potential to maybe trade out of six, um, which I wouldn't mind. But it's interesting. What what's another uh, big name that you saw at the combine that really impressed? Uh, Darnell Washington. The tight end from Georgia. Mm-hmm. Brock Bowers was the best receiver on the team, but Darnell Washington was the most impressive athlete and yeah. the most gifted athlete they had. Mm-hmm. He is six seven, almost two sixty. He ran the in the four fives, forty inch vertical, mm-hmm. and in the pass catching drills, he just put on a show. Yeah, he had one one handed catch on like a fade route that was nasty. Barely dropped the ball. His stock raised up. I'm pretty sure he's going to go really high. Mm-hmm. There are a few tight ends that played that went in there and did really well, including uh, Luke Schoonmaker from Michigan. He did really well. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Nolan Smith was the guy from Georgia, the yeah. linebacker defensive end, ran a 4-3-9, 40-inch vertical, just a different human. I've started he's just seeing, on a different level. I've started seeing uh, projections that put Nolan Smith at 18 to the Lions. That would be crazy if that happened. DJ Turner ran a four two six. Yeah, that was wild. I, that listen, I did not know. I knew he he could run. Yeah, but he that's, had a good day. Now I now I'm wondering like why wasn't he on punt and kick returns if he had right. that level of speed? Yeah, because four two six is something I did not envision from him. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? I Bijan Robinson was just obvious. He, he, yeah, he did his thing. CJ yeah, Stroud. CJ Stroud looked good. He looked good. Stetson Bennett. <laughs> Stetson Bennett, yeah, had maybe like the most two most impressive deep balls of the combine. 
Yeah. Like, he came out there and was just, he looked so comfortable. Mm-hmm. And it all looked easy when he was doing it. Yeah. I think he might go, like, fourth round. Mm-hmm. He might get drafted being, like, a definite backup and a possible starter for someone. Yeah. Another guy that uh, did well for himself was Jaden Reed, Michigan State wide receiver. He asked, They said he had an eye infection. Yeah. But he yeah. uh he ran a four four five, I believe, forty. Um in his drills, he didn't drop a ball. Uh people are saying he could get himself up into the second round now. Um I'd be very surprised if he went in the second. Yeah. But they said he just he looked really good uh based off the eye test. So I don't know. It, it's he's very cool talented, to see. Yeah. so it's possible. And it, it kind of his draft stock was hurt a lot this year because he was injured and, and things. Um, but I think that was an interesting one. But I don't think really anybody, like, failed at this combine. There were some guys that at least the top showed guys. up and didn't do. Yeah, the top guys, they did what they were supposed to do. Right. Like, nobody yeah. was, like, starting to question some of those top guys. Um, the only one may be Jalen Carter, but that's off the field issues. Um but I, I think that's going to be just fine at the end of the day. Yeah. As long as he d- doesn't get, like, charges brought against him. Yeah, I think right now they're just misdemeanors. Um, so if that goes through and nothing else is found, um, I'm sure that'll be fine, and he'll be right where he's supposed to be, and we'll go from there. But anything else from the uh, combine that you saw that was crazy or – uh. I think Zay Flowers might be the best receiver in this draft. Kind of a bold And that's, like, even outside of the combine. I think you watch his highlights and you watch his game tape. He's close to unstoppable running routes. Mm -hmm. When he gets the ball, people, like, really can't hold him or stay in front of him because he's too elusive Mm -hmm. and strong enough to get away from people. He is a problem. Yeah. Like, I I really think he could be, like, the next – uh, receiver for the Seahawks, 16. Tyler Lockett? Yeah. Maybe better. Hmm. Like, so, some people have gone as far as, like, Antonio Brown. I don't know if he could be that great, but yeah. I definitely see a potential Tyler Lockett hmm. with how good he is. His hands are great. He's fast. Yeah, he's total package at his size. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Just to mention as well, the quarterbacks that Lions uh, – the Lions talked to at the draft combine, Anthony Richardson and Hendon Hooker. Not so, surprising. Looks like they're looking for that kind of athletic quarterback. If that's, you know, listen, I that's what I take. It would from be it. incredible if they t- <laughs> ended up trading up in the first, yeah, and taking Anthony Richardson. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly, I feel like half of Detroit would ex- would explode in like anger, and half would be excited. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I would feel. I, I it would depend on what the deal turned out to be. Um, but I'm sure they would still keep most of their picks. But yeah, yeah, it'd be it'd be wild to be honest, because they they need the defensive help. I guess that's the other thing is uh, the cornerbacks basically that the Lions were looking at the Devin Witherspoons, the Christian Gonzalez's. They looked really good. Um, yeah, I feel like they should look at Jalen Forbes. Yeah. The dude from Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. He is the real deal. Mm-hmm. I think he ran like four three two. That's not bad. I it's think it was. Great. I think it was. Was it Christian Gonzalez that ran a four four and had a forty inch vertical? I think so. Yeah. So that's pretty wild. He'll probably be the top corner taken, I would assume. But uh, yeah. So draft combine, over and done with, and. Basically moving into free agency and then the drafts for NFL stuff. So we'll get to that after uh, all the March Madness is over. Uh, but now we got to get into these conference tournaments. So some have already started. A lot of the uh, mid-majors basically got going. Um, we've got some champions already. And the first one that I'm going to mention is really unfortunate because out of the NEC, we have Fairleigh Dickinson. And they did not win their tournament. Listen, I wish you had a boo button to hit right now to just rain boos. It is. It's not the players' fault. It's not totally the players' fault. No, it, it's it's not. It's, it's not at all. Actually, it's the rules. It is the NCAA and this dumb, ridiculous, stupid rule 
that they just continue to keep around for some reason like it's fair. But Merrimack should have made it in, and they didn't. Boo! Yes, boo. Boo to everybody in the NCAA <laughs> that keeps letting this happen. Last year it was Bellarmine who won the ASUN and mm-hmm. couldn't go to the tournament. This year it's Merrimack yep. who could have made it to the tournament for the first time. They wouldn't let them go. Mm-hmm. I, the, I'll never understand. And there, there, there is no point right. to this rule. There is no point. They were the best team in their conference because they won their conference tournament. They should be going. Yes. I don't, I don't get it. But uh, unfortunately, they're not going, and hopefully Fairleigh Dickinson plays decent enough. Uh, out of get smacked. <laughs> out of the Ohio Valley, Southeast Missouri State. It's their first, I think their second time in school history making yes. the tournament. First time yeah. since 2000. And they won in an overtime game against Tennessee Tech that was actually pretty fun to watch. Um, out of the Big South, we have UNC Asheville. They were basically the favorites the entire time. Yeah. Um, but they had a close game over Campbell. Um, but UNC Asheville, I would say, is a team to kind of watch out for, uh, depending on where their seating falls. Uh, Missouri Valley, we got Drake, kind of like we expected. They beat up on Bradley. Tucker DeVries is a real deal. Yeah. Uh, I started watching him a lot closer once you mentioned him. Um, he's fun to watch. And Drake's been to the tournament the last few years. so They could be scary. Yeah, they're not. Like, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, out of the A Sun, we got Kennesaw State. First time in school history. Yep. They won 67 to 66 over Liberty. It was a great game. To win the title. Um, yeah. Cool to see. Chris Youngblood there, yeah. the leading scorer. And this is the first time in like more than a decade or two that they've won more than 20 games. <laughs> yeah. This is they it's a culmination of what they've put together over these past four years. Yeah. Uh, in the Sun Belt, we got the Raging Cajuns from Louisiana. Uh, they won 71-66 to 66 over South Alabama. And then in the Southern, we have Furman. It's their, yeah, their second time in school history. Uh, it's their seventh appearance. Well, uh, wait, but I, the thought, fir- I thought they... It said, this says the first since 1980. But- so it was their first since 19... 19- I thought this was their second like in school history. Hmm. It's their seventh tournament appearance all time? That's what it says. But it's the first since 1980, never... so it might okay. have been, I, I don't know. It's been a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. All those ones in the 40s and 50s don't count. Second all time. <laughs> Either way, they uh, they beat up on Chattanooga to make it in. Um, and then in the Horizon League, mention, I'm not saying uh, Oakland here. Good. but <laughs> good, good riddance. Northern Kentucky winning the Horizon 63-61 to 61 over Cleveland State. This is their third appearance. Yeah. Uh, in the CAA, we have the Charleston Cougars, a this, thirty-one they, win team. They were in a they were down for a lot of the game. Yeah, and it took a late surge for them to win. Yeah, and I'll say they're going to be a weird team in the tournament because their leading scorer is Dalton Bolin, and he only averages 12. twelve and a half. Yeah, so they're they're, they're just like a good basketball yes, team. Yes, they're yeah. very balanced. So that's sometimes a team to watch out for, but it could also be a team that just gets blown out. Yeah. Um, and then last night we had Gonzaga winning the West Coast again. Uh, I, they they found their juice again at the right time. Yeah, because they just made that look easy. Yeah, they blew out St. Mary's. Yeah. St. Mary's like looked good in the regular season, but didn't matter. This is their twenty fourth consecutive tournament. Twenty fourth consecutive. Man. Um, and then in the Summit League, the Oral Roberts Golden Eagles are this, back. This game here, Joey. <laughs> I so I expected so just much to preview more. to preview yesterday when Malik had texted our group about college basketball he said Oral Roberts versus North Dakota State is must see TV tonight it was supposed to be now I agreed with him the matchups were there the stars looked like they were aligning but it didn't work out I mean they way. did for Oral Roberts but not yeah to, yeah Oral well, Roberts got out to like a 16-2 lead and they just punt they punched them in the mouth. And North yeah. Dakota State never knew how to recover. Yep. They just they didn't know how to get back. They won 92 to 58. And I will say once again, Oral Roberts will be a team to watch out for. Max Aismas is a he is the one of those tournament guards. Yep. That you have to be afraid of. Mm-hmm. And Connor Vanover, seven foot four big. That that he's got kind some skill. Of, he kind of plays like a big. Yeah. Because he he's like more of a jump shooter than a post player. Right. Yeah. Him and Max Aismas are dangerous in the pick and roll. Yeah. Um, 
I believe we have... Oh, because it's on my other thing. I believe it's the Patriot League finalists tonight. Yeah, it's Lafayette and um, Colgate. That's the Patriot final. Okay. And I watched Laf- Lafayette is 10 and 22. And I badly want them to upset Colgate and somehow make yeah. the tournament. I watched their game against American Lafayette's their last game. Mm-hmm. It was a quality game, and their, their leading scorer is a kid named Leo O'Boyle. That is that's like a two K generated name. Yeah, Leo O'Boyle. He has red hair, and he's a three point shooter. Mm-hmm. I think he averaged like fourteen a game. He's just like a. <laughs> he's not. I don't think he shoots like a super high percentage from three, mm-hmm. but when he gets hot, like he's unstoppable. Yeah. It's just really fun to watch. Colgate is most likely going to blow them out, but yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see Lafayette win. Right. Um, oh, we do have the the Southland tournament final uh, at five today, which is in a half an hour. Is that the New Orleans? It's uh, Northwestern State. Uh, oh, okay, Northwestern and uh, Texas A and M. What is it? Catholic Christian or something? Is that Corpus Christi? Oh, it's Corpus Christi. You're right. Oh, man. A&M Corpus Christi, yeah. Jeez. Uh, so both those teams are 22 and 10. Uh, so should be a decent final. And then, uh, yeah, all the other major conferences are getting into their first rounds. Yeah. ACC started uh, last night. Mm-hmm. They're going right now. Big E started. St. John's is going to beat Butler most likely. Uh, yeah. We also have the, the Big Sway. Sky Championship tonight. 11.30, North Arizona and, and Montana. Montana State. But Montana State's been kind of running the big sky the last couple of years. Yeah. So, um, yeah, those are the automatic bids that have already made it in and uh, some of those. So we're going to preview the bigger tournaments that are coming up. I think that – I don't know if I have a Big East bracket anywhere, though. The Big East one isn't filled out. I can, I can give you the ones uh, that are today. I have a pull it up on the ESPN app right now. Okay. So, I was just yeah. going to look at the, the tournaments as a whole. St. John's is beating Butler right now. DePaul plays Seton Hall at 530. Georgetown plays Villanova at 8. Get Pat Ewing out of Georgetown, <laughs> please. He's done too much horrible things to that university. Yeah. Outside of being a player. You still silently looking for a bracket? No, oh. I, I found him. I okay. found him. I found him. Um, so I don't have the Big East one, so I'm just going to kind of skip over that for now. Um, we can basically talk about the Big East teams, who we think is going to win. Um, Big East is pretty pretty wide open, I would say. Um, but right now I pulled up the Big 12. So today we have... West Virginia taking on Texas Tech and Oklahoma State taking on Oklahoma in the first round. Now, West Virginia is kind of a spooky team. They're, they've kind of built their tournament case after beating Kansas State yeah. a few days ago. Um, we were thinking Kansas State could be dangerous in, in the big dance, but uh, West Virginia just knocked them off, sort of. Um, so I would think West Virginia is going to beat Texas Tech because they're on a roll. But you never fully know. Um, and then Oklahoma State and Oklahoma is kind of a toss up. Yeah, they definitely uh, just. I mean, it's Oklahoma either looks extremely average or they're beating a the top team. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow in the quarterfinals we have Baylor Iowa State. That should be a really good game. Yeah. Um, being myself, I like to pull for Iowa State. I like the Cyclones. Um, Baylor just. I thought when L.J. Cryer came back that Baylor was gonna just start running away with some games. And they haven't. Um, so, I don't know. Question marks there. And then Kansas is, is going to play the winner of West Virginia, Texas Tech. Um, if it's West Virginia, I don't know. You never know. Kansas has dropped some games. They got blown out by Texas. To end I, just, the I can't see. I can't see. I don't Kansas either, but. West Virginia. It's you know, possible, but. Yeah. Um, I would assume Texas Tech or Texas takes care of whoever they get in the next round, Oklahoma State or Oklahoma. And then Kansas State, TCU, even though Kansas State lost to West Virginia, I think they'll get back on track. Um, who do you do you think the top two are gonna make it out of the Big Twelve? Do you think there's gonna be an upset? What are you what are you thinking 
who who makes it out of the Big Twelve? It's hard for me to see Kansas losing, but I like Kansas State. I'd like to see that as a championship matchup, mm-hmm. Kansas and Kansas State. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it's just it's just really hard for me to see Kansas losing. They're just they're so good, but and they've I, been through all of it. See, I feel like I'm going with recency bias, maybe, but I'm I keep thinking that Texas is going to take it. The way that they I looked, can understand yeah. the way that they looked against Kansas, I. I don't know. They don't seem like they're going to have much in the way, uh, especially if they're going to play Kansas State, who we've seen kind of dip a little bit towards the end here. I'm going to go with Texas as my pick to take it. Um, All right, going on to the next. We'll just go in order of what I have them. We got the ACC, which, of course, started yesterday. Um, Georgia Tech beat... Florida State uh, yesterday, and then Boston College blew out Louisville, and Virginia Tech beat Notre Dame. So today we have Wake Forest beating Syracuse, and Pitt is up on Georgia Tech. Looks like they should win that game. And then, crazily enough, the number one ranked team at the beginning of the season is number seven in the ACC tournament. North Carolina taking on Boston College. Tonight. Is it is it wrong that I want North Carolina to lose? Not right really. Now? Not really. They just because of the preseason hype and the way they've fallen flat on their faces. Yeah, I have. They no just idea. need to get out of here. I have no idea what happened. Let's have a tournament without Carolina. Yeah, that sounds like fun to me. Yeah, I was hoping Duke would miss the tournament too, but they <laughs> they clean their act up enough. I think yeah. they're going to be fine. Um. I don't know. The ACC is weird this year. Um, North Carolina could realistically win the whole thing, but they played so bad, I, I don't see it. Um, who do you who do you see coming out of the ACC? The top four seeds are Miami, Virginia, Clemson, and Duke. Or do you see somebody else winning? I think it? it's either Duke or Miami. Okay. I don't think Virginia has the offensive punch that they usually have out of a few guys. Mm-hmm. They've they've been in a weird slump the last half of the season, and they're usually like getting ready to go around this time. Yeah. So, yeah, Miami, their backcourt is just vicious. Right. Yeah, Isaiah Wong won ACC Player of the Year a few a few days ago. Duke. I like this Duke team, but I don't know if they like. I don't know if they have another level to them. I feel like they're just good. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm just gonna go with Miami. Mm. Okay. Regular season champion wins the tournament. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm kind of going chalk as well. I think it might be Miami Virginia championship. Um and then I don't know. I, I also have bias towards Virginia, but um I do think Miami is probably probably gonna get the job done. Okay. And then we get to the SEC. August, do you want to go over the Pac-12? I was going to skip them. Yeah. Okay. UCLA is the only team that – Yeah. Sorry, Pac-12. UCLA is the only team that really matters out of your conference. Yeah, they're kind of – Get it together. They're kind of – USC might make the tournament. They probably will, like a 10 seed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. ACC, here we go. Uh, So, today we have Ole Miss in South Carolina, LSU in Georgia – and then tomorrow we got Mississippi State, Florida. Tennessee is going to take the winner of Ole Miss or South Carolina. Got Arkansas, Auburn, which should be a really good game. And then Vandy is going to take on LSU or Georgia. The top four seeds in the SEC are Alabama, Texas A&M, Kentucky, and Missouri. So who do you see coming out of the SEC this year? Um, will it be one of those top four? Will somebody else figure it out? I'm going to go with a curveball. Okay. I like curveballs. A team that made it to the championship game last year and lost and was very close to making the tournament. They're going to make the tournament this year, whether they win this turn- this conference tournament or not. I'm going with Texas A&M. Okay. I am a fan of Wade Taylor. I think he's the best point guard in the SEC. Mm-hmm. I think he's one of the best point guards in the country. He's dependable from the line. He's a good three-point shooter. He's a leader. 
I like Julius Marble and uh, Henry Coleman mm-hmm. as the bigs. I just like the way they play. And I feel like no team in the SEC is hitting like a high level stride right now. Yeah. Like Kentucky is winning good games, but they still don't look like a regular Kentucky team. Mm -hmm. Auburn is, they've had some good wins, but I still don't trust them a lot. That's how I feel about both Arkansas and Auburn. (laughs) Like Nick Smith is like getting healthy, but they still haven't like come together really as a team. Right. Mississippi State and Florida, no. Vandy, Vandy has had a nice little hot streak. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't trust them fully. I'm going to go Texas A&M to win the tournament. Okay. It's kind of where I'm leaning to, to be honest. <laughs> I like Texas A&M as well. Um, I don't really see too many upsets here. I think there could be a few. Maybe, like, maybe like a Vanderbilt over Kentucky or something. That's, that's the one I was thinking yeah. about. It's possible. Um, I think Tennessee is toast, like we said, since they lost to Kai Ziegler. Um, the only other thing is like maybe Texas A&M, A&M is riding too hot right now. I do think Arkansas or Auburn could give them a challenge. Again, I don't think it's likely, but I think if Arkansas or Auburn are playing at the top of their game, there is a chance that they could do something. Um, but I don't know the likelihood of that. So I could see this tournament also being somewhat chalky. I think Alabama should have a pretty easy way to the championship. There, um, There is a scenario where Alabama just walks through right. this tournament and makes it look kind of easy. Exactly. But, yeah. Texas A&M just beat them. Right. Yeah. So if they get the rematch, you never know what can yeah. happen. Um, Is there any other conference you want to talk about before we get to the Big Ten? You want to talk about the American? You want to talk about? Uh, no, I don't want to talk about the American. Uh, uh, I, I don't. I don't really think there's one that stands out to me, honestly. Like I said, the Big East. The Big East is pretty open too. We got. I kind of hope Davidson wins the A10 tournament because they were a disappointment during the season. They they were a really disappointment. Yeah. Um, Big East got UConn, Xavier. Oh. I, I'm interested to see what Seton Hall does in the Big East tournament. They play P- DePaul today. Um, I really like that Seton Hall team. Um, I mean, St. Peter's ain't going to make the tournament, but Coach Holloway might if Seton Hall hey, can pull Saint, off a miracle. St. Peter's won their game yesterday. Yeah, They're moving on. but It will be crazy if St. Peter's and Seton Hall made the tournament. Yeah. And it's likely both most likely don't. Yes. Seton Hall has to – Go on a crazy run, but I do think that they're capable of it. Yeah, um, I mean, it it could be like remember a few years ago when Georgetown wasn't really right. good during the yes. season, and then they just won the Big East tournament. Yeah, it could be one of those scenarios. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, I don't know if there's really any. Shoot. Yeah, no, no major standouts on it, honestly. I can't even tell. I mean, I'd love to see you and BC get in again, but. I don't think they're going to beat Vermont. Right. Oh, is this? Oh, this is still the empty bracket. Okay. Never mind. We will move on to. Actually, yeah, UMBC is already out. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> UMass Lowell plays Vermont Saturday. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, they play Saturday morning, UMass Lowell and Vermont for the nice. America East title. The old Catamounts. Yes. All right. Let's get into the Big Ten. We got six teams at the end of the regular season that were tied for second in this conference. Um, so if you didn't think the conference was crazy, just wait till you see this tournament. So today we got Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, Nebraska. Big whoop. Kase Tomonaga moves on. Yeah, the Japanese curry. I mean, Minnesota's pretty bad. So yes, um, Ohio State, Wisconsin might be interesting. Um, Both of them have had strange, like decent wins in the in the last half of the season. Yeah, like if they played their best, they might have a chance. But the real meat and potatoes is tomorrow. That's I'm where the conference. That that's when the tournament starts. Um, tomorrow we got Rutgers in Michigan, bright and early. Who cares? Snooze. Wow. <laughs> Why is it snooze, Malik? What's uh, what's happened with Michigan to end the season? How did that go? 
We didn't get to talk about that. They suck, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> they are in games. They've had so many Every chances. game they're in games outside of like when they got destroyed by Penn State. Yeah. And they can never close a game out. They always have a lead with like three minutes left. Mm-hmm. And they always just let a team crawl back. And the last two games have gone to overtime, and they lost both games. Yep. They were beating Indiana. Indiana came back. And then Michigan had a lead for a second, and then they got blown out. Um, Yeah. It, it's been rough. They do what losers do. It's been, it's been rough. They, they just, yeah. But are they good enough to get past Rutgers? They are. Okay. That's all I but needed the, to hear. The, the, the last, like, great game they played – was against Rutgers. Mm-hmm. That was like that that impressive win they had, yeah, at Rutgers, and the odds of them doing that again, I I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I've I've said I just want the season to end. Honestly, yeah, I don't even want them to make the. They deserve to just go home, but they're what they're probably gonna beat Rutgers tomorrow. Yeah, and then I'm gonna be like, oh, what if they win the next one? Like ah, well, just if, end it. If they just win the next it. one, they play. They would play Purdue. If they beat Purdue, they're in the tournament. There's no doubt about it. Probably. And then you have to watch them another game. I have game. to watch them again. <laughs> I'm tired of them, Joe. You'd have to watch them at least one more big tournament game and then the actual NCAA I'm, tournament I'm game. I'm so tired of these. I'm mentally, I was mentally done with them two weeks ago and then they got back again. Yeah. And now I, I, I just don't know what to do anymore. Well, luckily for you, I'm in the same exact boat because the other game will be Iowa in the winner of Ohio State, Wisconsin. And the winner of that game gets to play Michigan State. So most likely it's Iowa playing Michigan State. Yeah. You got to hope it's not Iowa. <laughs> you got to hope it's not them. Yeah. But if Wisconsin or Ohio State win, what does that, like, what does that even mean? Michigan State almost lost to Ohio State. They're not for a while them in the conference tournament. Um, so that was crazy. You don't want to see Peyton Sanford again. No. <laughs> don't. I don't want to, I don't want to see Iowa, but, uh, it's, that's probably what it's going to be. Because Michigan State got that by, they're the fourth seed, somehow. Um, and then we got Penn State, Illinois, and then Maryland will take on the winner of most likely Nebraska. Um, so then the first four buys are Purdue, uh, Northwestern, Indiana, and Michigan State. Who do you think is coming out on top of the Big Ten? It's going to be Purdue. You think so? I want it to be Northwestern. They're already. It's. I, I love the fact that they're already pretty much into the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. But, and they've beaten Purdue once already, so it's possible. Right. But I feel like Braden Smith and Foster Lawyer. Foster, have you noticed Foster Fletcher. Lawyer? Had, I mean, yeah, F- Fletcher. I'm sorry. <laughs> have you Although noticed Davidson did just win? Have you noticed Fletcher has kind of been like off? Yeah. For the second half of the season, their guards both have struggled. Yeah. A bit. Yeah. I I feel like they've gone through. The toughest stretches of the season. Mm-hmm. I feel like they know what they're going into. And Zach Eady, we do we know what he's gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh we I expect Brayden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer to be at least decent in these games. Mm-hmm. And their team is strong enough to not walk to the tournament, but confidently just get there. Yeah. And get it done. I will say, as much as Michigan has struggled, Michigan is probably the one team that Purdue doesn't really want to see. For their first game of this tournament. Michigan could have beat them. Yeah. And they match up well. Hunter Dickinson and Zach Eady, somewhat similar. Um, Hunter Dickinson can guard Zach Eady. Um, I think Michigan's guards could actually pester Fletcher Lawyer and them uh, a bit. So it would be an interesting one. I do think Purdue would win, but Michigan is probably that one team that they don't really want to see. Um. I don't know. I I don't know why I have this like sensation towards Illinois that I've had basically all season. Listen, I I don't think about them. <laughs> and I shouldn't. But I do I, constantly. After their like after their preseason hype and their like average start to the season, I just they just left my mind. Yeah. And they've been solid throughout mm-hmm. the season. But I they still just don't have my attention. Yeah. I, I think my biggest problem with them too is they're similar to Michigan where they've had a lot of close calls. Where they've been in games and they, they should have lost to Michigan. Yeah, and they, they just should have lost to Michigan. But they just can't get over the hump on some of these games either. Um, like who they play Indiana recently. 
Yes, and they and that was the they, one. They, they were up like for most of the second half, and they lost in the last few seconds. Yes, yes, that's the that's the game that I watched very closely, um, and I was like, okay, here they go. They're maybe this is their time, and they'll be ready for the Big Ten tournament. And they lost, so I don't know. I still feel like they have the talent. Uh, their side of the bracket is definitely doable. They have to take Penn State out, and then Northwestern. Hard to say what Northwestern we're going to get. Um, and then you're most likely playing Indiana again. So it's possible, but I think I've been bound in some false sense of security. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's weird. Um, and the same thing with Michigan State. Like, I, they could probably blow out Iowa because they get everything right from the mistakes they made the first game. Recently, they aren't, aren't they like top five in three point shooting? Yes, they have been on fire. Mm-hmm. The problem is that's got to run out eventually, and the problem is this is not the time to run out. Uh, so that makes me nervous. Like I said, I have really enjoyed watching Tyson Walker. I think he's closed the season out very well. Um, but they're gonna. I I think they need Joey Hauser to keep this hot streak that he has because he's been shooting. He's been one of the guys that has been shooting the ball really well. Um, and I think he's he's going to be a key factor for them in this. And that's the same with Michigan. Hunter Dickinson has closed the season out pretty well. Pretty well. Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Saying Hunter Dickinson just reminded me about how the way the Michigan game ended. I, t- <laughs> I totally forgot <laughs> that Kobe Bufkin... Pass the ball to the back of Hunter Dickinson's head. Which, if anybody knows, I've said it multiple times, that is my biggest pet peeve in basketball. Not getting a shot off before the buzzer. And Michigan did exactly... Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, Malik. I'm getting all the flooding back in that Kobe Bufkin did not take that that shot to end the game. It it made it worse. Oh boy. Them two pretty much carried them for like most of the game. Yeah. Hunter Dickinson hit a three late. That I hate this team. Was <laughs> I can't. I, I I want them to go away. Oh, man. I hate them. I don't know why I just thought of it, but it, I did. Um, So, yeah. The, the Big Ten is going to be fun to watch. That's for sure. Um, But I don't know. If Michigan State or Michigan make a run, I'll be surprised. And I hate to say that, but I'll be surprised. So a lot, Joey. I agree. So I agree. You're going with Purdue to win it, and you want North, but you would like Northwestern to win. Did you say white? <laughs> Did I? Probably. Actually, let me go. I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan State made a run to the, you think t- so? to the title game. I would not be surprised. I just don't know how they get over Purdue. Well, that, shoot, that, shooting like I, the lights out again. That is their biggest. I, I've seen them shoot the lights out, and yeah. they can do it again. I just, I feel like Purdue could slow the game down, be like, That's oh, yeah. True. Zach e- we have Zach Eady, and who does Michigan State have? Oh, they have Maddie Sissoko. Okay, we're fine. That's, you just start running That's... up and down, yeah, or at least you try. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm, go- I'm going with Purdue. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. I don't know. I don't trust anybody in the Big Ten. I'm nervous they're going to all get. You can't go into the NCAA tournament. I'm, you can't. I'm nervous they're all going to get bounced. Like I, I just, I want Northwestern to win a tournament game. That's all I want. Yeah. I don't care about anybody else. Yeah. Not a team. That's true. All righty. That's our, our loose Big Ten conference tournament preview. Um, these games will all be finished by Sunday, which will be Selection Sunday, where we will all be watching closely on TV to see where all these teams go seeding wise see if Michigan makes the tournament cuz they are on the bubble see if teams like North Carolina make the tournament because they are on the bubble um but next week we are doing our March Madness special it will be a 2 hour show we're going to try to put it on Facebook live we are going to be in the studio we will have a couple guests a zoom call and hopefully can make some cool graphics uh, to make the production big time this year. And we get to see the crazy takes that everybody has this year because Chris Pappas should be back. He always has crazy takes, but he did he did ride the Peacocks last year. 
He did. So I will give him credit where credit is due. We will have the crazy takes from Sammy Taramina, uh, the Michigan State. I, 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 the Michigan State guy. I I can't. <laughs> you can't even think of something it, yeah. extreme enough. You just got to go with guy. The Michigan State slappy, basically. <laughs> Yes, uh, <laughs> that is a good dis- description. And then my brother, who I, you know, I don't know what college basketball he's been watching this year. To be honest, uh, he'll probably bring up a UFC fight. To, uh, honestly, but um, we'll get everybody's opinions. We'll make some picks. So hopefully everybody can show up. So we'll have five people. So somebody can be the tiebreaker for each round if we need it. And uh, it's usually one of my favorite shows of the year. It should be good. Mike, any last? Final words. Are you ready for Drake to make it to the final four? It's not happening. I can't wait. Are you sure? St. Peter's wasn't supposed to make the Elite Eight. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Tucker DeVries is coming. And I wish he was on Michigan. I hate this team.